This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on India's strides in space. The participants are science communicator and journalist Pallav Bagla and Sanjay Jha, journalist. Along the lines of the US, now several private sector companies, both global and domestic, have taken huge interest in India's space program. With the space-based communication networks coming to the fore, and today Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji launched the Indian Space Association and also interacted with the representatives of the space industry. Prime Minister said that this new association will act as a single window and independent agency on matters related to space technology, representing the various stakeholders in the Indian space domain, with members comprising the Indian Space Research Program, ISRO, and many private companies. Palak, what do you think of significance of this sudden trust on this Indian Space Association? Why suddenly the private companies are vying to get into this? See, the Indian Space Association is a very welcome step and it is an industry body which will probably act as an advising body for the government to give the views of what the industry seeks from the government in this very crucial sector of space. A space touches everybody's lives, almost from the cradle to the grave now. So when you go to an ATM machine to withdraw money, there is a linkage to the satellites and space. Everywhere, from Google Maps to use of weather data, space is there everywhere. Until now, almost all the space technology in India was totally controlled by one organization, which is the Indian Space Research Organization and the Department of Space. Now, with this proposed unlocking of the space sector, the private players will get a better hold into the space sector. Till now, they were just vendors, but they could now be now full-fledged players. So I think the inauguration of the Indian Space Association is a very welcome step. And this is not a regulatory body. This is not a body which will set policy. This is a body of the industry which will work alongside with the government to make sure that space technologies reach the 1.35 billion Indian population and gives them the maximum benefit. As you rightly said that so far we have only seen the progress in the space sector by the government agency ISRO and they were primarily at the center of this progress. Now, the Prime Minister said that the space sector is a major medium for progress of 1.3 billion population of this country. So, in a vast country like ours, where geographically from one corner to another corner, it's very different. So, what does the space sector mean for us? Is it better mapping, imaging, connectivity, facilities? And is that why there is a significance of development of the space sector and then many of these private companies are jumping into it, seeing the huge opportunity of connectivity? See, the private sector was always there in the Indian space business. They were like vendors. I hear that 70% of the budget of the Indian Space Research Organization is spent on the Indian industry for sending them components, making parts. But now, with this whole new approach, the industry could well make full-fledged rockets, could have full-fledged satellites. And when there is competition, certainly the pricing comes down, unless, of course, cartels get formed. And that is something which we have to ensure that the private industry doesn't form cartels. And when the competition is there, pricing comes down, innovation happens. And the Prime Minister clearly laid down four specific points on which space reforms are based. One, he said, there should be freedom of innovation in the private sector. Second, he said, the government should be an enabler. Today, Indian Space Research Organization was the sole agency and they were the regulators, they were the makers, they were the launchers, they were the users, literally. But now the government wants to be an enabler. Third, the Prime Minister said that one has to prepare the youth for the future. And because of that, the young startup industry is really booming in the space sector. Several startups are looking good. And lastly, the Prime Minister clearly said the space has to be looked upon as a resource, as something which will benefit 
the 1.3 billion population. Now, be it in uh, weather forecasting for farmers or for better forecasting, where to catch good fish for fishermen or to how to do geotagging of the development projects so that money doesn't get siphoned off and leakages don't happen in the system. Some of this is already happening through the existing mechanisms of the government. But now to multiply that, one needs the private sector to chip in and the Indian Space Association along with the creation of in space, which is like the single window clearance body for space technologies and to help the industry is a very welcome step. And the earlier it gets done, but it has to be done with the right heart and mind in place. Hurdles need to be removed and people need to be there with an open mind. And one certainly sees the Prime Minister is personally pushing very hard to make sure that the space sector becomes a creative force for the country. Space can help in the development of the country. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who long ago when he came to power in 2014, I had said he is a space buff. He knows how to use space technologies for the betterment of India. And today, so many years later, it is fructifying how slowly but steadily he is nudging the sector to try and deliver and give good development for India. And towards that, reducing the extent to which the control was there with the Indian Space Research Organization is a very welcome step. But I should also add, it is the Indian Space Research Organization and the Department of Space which have given the platform which the private sector can build its capacity. So ISRO, certainly we need to salute. But beyond this, multiplication can happen through the private sector, which is what the Prime Minister hopes. And I'm sure when the Prime Minister puts his mind to it, it would happen. Recently, we have seen several Indian and international companies have bet on satellite communication as the next frontier to provide internet connectivity at the retail level. We still in India, we see at many places, the internet speed is very, very slow, especially in the rural areas, you know. And after Corona, we have seen the online classes are happening, banking is happening. Most of our life is now switching slowly to digital. So there is a new trust on satellite internet. And suddenly we see companies like SpaceX, Starlink, our own Sunil Bharti Mittal's OneWeb, Amazon's Project Copier, Americans doing it. Like OneWeb, for example, is building its initial constellation of 648 low orbit satellites and has already put 322 satellites into orbit. How would this new phase of communication expansion would help India and Indian economy? Oh, there is no doubt. See, today the world has become highly digital and the COVID-19 pandemic has shown how digital India could really move ahead during those lockdowns and continue doing some of its activities because things were digital and the internet was there. Especially the fact how schools and colleges were able to conduct online classes is a very important fact. Very soon, India is going to be reaching the 100 crore vaccination mark and the Coven platform has played a critical role in India reaching the the 100 crore mark, which it should very soon. And all of that was enabled through the internet and digital services. And as you rightly pointed out, there are places in India where the internet speed is still slow. And one needs to get internet access and broadband internet access to all areas of India. There is this very big effort to provide fiber-based internet to all districts and all blocks. Uh, certainly, there is no comparison to fiber optic based speeds, but some of the connectivity could certainly come through satellite internet. And this new announcement that one web part of Sunil Bharti Mittal's company is going to be partnering with the Indian Space Research Organization and using the polar satellite launch vehicle and the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark 3 to launch some of its satellites from India is certainly a step in the right direction. Satellites can give you seamless connectivity, but really high speeds come through optical fibers. And we have a very large 
optical fiber network on which the government is working. But you know, the areas where there is no internet, so the experts are saying that satellite internet will be essential for broadband inclusion in those remote areas and sparsely populated areas of Northeast and many other parts of the country. Will satellite telephony, satellite internet will become the sort of the solution for these areas? Uh, one will have to wait and watch. See, India already has over a billion uh, mobile phones. So there is very widespread availability of voice communication across the country. And today, there are very, very few areas where you don't get cell phone tower coverage and cellular network coverage. Uh, yes, now if you want at the peaks in the Himalayas internet coverage, then certainly you need satellites to do that. And towards that, India and ISRO had launched the satellite which would enable some of that. And now with the private sector coming in, that would certainly be an opportunity. But for that, I think what we need and some of the industry leaders pointed out even to the Prime Minister that the country urgently needs these other space communications policy. Uh, right now, the space communication policy is under discussion and the final draft is almost ready, as uh, some of the experts pointed out. But the final fully drafted version needs to be made so that the industry can prepare for future. And that would be a big enabler. One thing with the Prime Minister pointed out, which I think uh, is worth mentioning, is that in the 20th century, space and space technology was more like a divider among the world. So there were divisions in the world of haves and have-nots. In the 21st century, Prime Minister Narendra Modi thinks that with India stepping in in a big way and space technology, which India certainly has end-to-end -end capabilities, can be a unifier. I think that is a very nice way of looking at the future of space technology because if you look at space as a unifier, that is a very important way and also says how India's visionaries who laid the foundations of the space program in India, they also viewed space as a technology which would help the last mile and the last person. So space as a unifier is a wonderful concept, and I think uh, India can certainly lead the way. But India still has a very small part of the global space market. If India has to leapfrog and compete with the big daddies of uh, the United States of America, Europe, and Russia, then there is a lot more that needs to be done, and the industry also needs to bootstrap and do new and innovative research and development, and create its own intellectual property. But space as a unifier is a beautiful concept. Normally, we have seen whenever a private sector comes in any of the control sector, then let's say, for example, telecommunication, we have much more options and connectivity has increased, the teledensity has increased. So for a common man, when the space technology is introduced for the private sector, Sector, probably it will convert into a tool of last mile delivery, a leakage free, transparent governments, and for a people like they can get a faster information on the speed of the shipment delivery for entrepreneurs. What else can we see with this more players coming into a space? As they say, space is the next horizon, and the young Indian entrepreneurs, startups, they are developing newer and newer approaches on trying to tap and monetize space technology so that it can be used for the benefit of the country. Uh, farmers, fishermen, cell phone connectivity, national security, these are things which we have dealt with for a while. There will be many, many things which are unknowns, and some of them would get enabled as more and more innovation happens in space, and that intellectual property should ideally be developed in India. That is when we will see space as a sector flourishing and doing well for you and me. Thank you so much for your time, Palla Balaji. Pleasure speaking to you. You were listening to a discussion on India's strides in space. The participants were science communicator and journalist Pallav Bagla and Sanjay Jha, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio.